Okay, you well, don't wash your sheets? Uh, no. I've, I've washed them once since 2013. He said he hasn't changed the sheets since. Or even washed them. Do you change yours? I wash them like every two weeks. It's a lot of fucking work. <laughs> Welcome to episode 26 of the DM Monday podcast. We got a cool guest, Brian Martin, coming on later. But uh, what the fuck is up, boys? What the fuck? What up? Mitch Wallace and Trey Bonner today. And my co-host. We just had a show down in Birmingham. It was badass, wasn't it? Too bad you weren't there, Bonner. Mitch, did you kiss Darby? (laughs) No, but I did tell Darby that you missed her. Dude. And that you were a eligible bachelor. Thank God. (laughs) Hooking a boy up. She said Bonner's great, but... He's not the one for me, I don't think. I said, well, I said, well, keep thinking. It was cool to see uh, Darby. We went down Thursday night. Me and Burrell did. Friday, we were supposed to do a radio interview, and it got canceled. So we just went and got my oil changed and took care of some stuff. But uh, Friday night, we went out on town, and we were we were leaving Tin Roof, walking over to Innisfree, like Nikki T and all of them came down. And uh, we passed Darby and Sarah on the street. Were they course, going dude. fucking Innisfree? Innisfree? And it's free, yeah. And it's free. Head, there, dude. head to the free, baby. And it's freaks. And uh, yeah, we had a good time. I Irish goodbye that night. Just went back to the hotel. I do that every night. Yeah. Well, you Irish goodbye after the show. What'd you do? Went home, went to sleep. Baby. Yeah, whatever. That's what I do every time. He went on a solo. <laughs> he went on a solo critter crawl. So, uh, did nah. you succeed? <laughs> I went home, went to sleep, man. Ooh. Dude, one time I went to Anna's free with a, a girl, and then Darby and Sarah were there, and she ended up not Darby, but the other girl ended up making out with somebody else. Wasn't a great night. The girl you brought? Yeah. Oh man, not good. Did you make out with Darby? Unfortunately, have not. you ever kissed Darby? No, Darby. Oh, if you're watching this, I want to. I want to kiss have you. Y'all ever been on a date? No, not yet. Damn. Have y'all ever texted or anything? Who Darby? Yeah, is this is all made up in your mind. No, it's real. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll Facetime her right now. She'll answer. Uh, maybe Facetime her. We need to call. Oh, yeah. her. Let's see. Let's see. She'll answer. Do it. Do, do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, all right. Wait. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna tell her? I don't know. Tell her that you want to date her. I don't know. You have to say, "Hey, you're on the podcast right now. Would you be interested in show the don't, even, don't even tell her you're on the podcast. Just ask her out on a date. No, you tell her. It's obvious you have headphones on. Yeah, that's fair. Let's see what happens. Ask her to go get tacos. Tacos. Yeah, that, I mean, true Nashville fashion. How's this <laughs> shit work? I got the new iOS. So how it works? No, you don't know how it works. That's Siri, on. Facetime. Oh, there it goes. Don't put me on it. Why not? <laughs> this is your date. Do you have an iPhone 10? I mean, yeah, I just got the new iOS. I had iOS 14, the Steve Jobs prototype for a long time. It's not looking good, fellas. Dude, there's like an iPhone 15 out now. You're so behind. You want to touch it? <laughs> touch your phone? Yeah. <laughs> Look how old it looks. The speaker, uh, when you record videos with it, it doesn't you work. Do you want to touch it? <laughs> Dude, when you were... It's not looking good. But when you record oh. video... Did you hang up or did you, you didn't let it go? You didn't let it go to the end. Hey, just, just FaceTime Sarah then. She'll answer. So, it she doesn't go to the end. We ain't doing all that. But uh, when you take videos of my phone, there's no audio. Like the the mic doesn't work. Pretty much. You can get it cleaned out. It'll just get dirty. Oh, okay, that's good. You can get like a like a toothpick and clean it out. What have you been up to, Bonner? Uh, not a whole lot. Working my day job. Yeah. Uh, that's have about you ever it. saved anybody's life? I don't think so. At your day job? Uh, yeah, I like work at a hospital. Dude, I'm just an administrative guy. But at a hospital? Oh no, I'm at the college, the university. Oh, I thought you were at Vanderbilt Hospital. No, I'm just at the university. Oh. I don't do shit, dude. I'm just... A, just walk around and change his signs all day. I mean, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. No, that's cool. You been on any dates lately? How's dating life going? Mm-hmm. Zero out of ten. I was seeing this girl, or talking to this girl, and I thought we were going to come back from Christmas break, you know, and go on a date. And she had got a boyfriend. Did you buy her Damn. a gift? No. How did she get a boyfriend while you were talking to her? <laughs> you know, I think it was a one-way thing, Mitch. <laughs> I was talking to her. She wasn't talking back. Yeah. I didn't, you know. Yeah, I get that. I've been there. I've there. been there. So uh, we have no prospects. So if you're interested, uh, slide into Mitch's DMs. Let him know so he can screen for me. Yeah, I'll screen. 
If you, I think you anybody at this point, yeah, yeah. anybody that's willing is <laughs> yeah, fucking, I'll go out with anybody. Yeah, you hear yeah. that? It's uh, his Instagram handle is by Trey Bonner, right? Yep, that's me and yeah. Trey Bonner. By he's got both. He's I got, got Trey Bonner music. I don't have Trey Bonner. I want it though. No. Yeah, he's yeah. got Trey Bonner music. Who stole that? Fucking, I don't know. They got four followers. I asked if I could get it, buy it, whatever they need. Yeah, they never respond. Fuck no. Damn. Damn. No followers. No photos. Like what? Nothing. What do you think your mom would do if you came home with a girlfriend? Probably nothing. Would Probably she? be glad I wouldn't be calling her every 15 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> so what would Rowan do? <laughs> I don't know. Probably be glad. Is your dog in Nashville or is he back in Alabama? No, she's back. She's in Nashville. Back in Nashville? She's back. I I've thought had you her gave back. Rowan to your mom. No, nah, I've had Rowan back. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't know Rowan's that. a goat, dude. We've been chilling. Yeah. You, do you ever take Rowan to a dog park? You can uh, get a lady that one. I've taken her a couple of times. And that doesn't get you any girls? That doesn't get you girls? I did. I hate dog parks. They stress dude, me out. You might as well be able to meet. <laughs> they stress me out. They stress me out, dude. <laughs> Probably might be able to meet some weird girl there. That I, well, that's sorry. the other thing. I don't want to date a girl who has a dog because then it's annoying because most of the time their dog's a fucking pain in the ass. Dogs can be cock you know saying, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Dogs can suck. Yeah, because it's like her dog's a pain in the ass most of the time. Yeah, I like those shoes. Those are sick. Thanks. Yeah. Have you ever like, uh, have you seen the commercials for the things you can put in your shoes to make you a couple inches taller? Do they work? I don't know. I'm just, Fuck I was going to ask you Send if you me ever a link. I'll order them and let you know next podcast. Do you want to be taller? Fuck yeah. I wish I was 5'8. <laughs> wow. Uh, Why not like 6'1 or 6'5? I mean, me putting How tall are you? 5'4 and 3 fourths. Hmm, cool. Sometimes I feel like girls like, like just like, well, in like, Talk to a guy over a guy that's way hotter that's shorter just because he's tall. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. But there's some girls that love like uh, short kings. Yeah, but fucking not in Nashville. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Has a girl ever been like, I love how tall not, you not are? A, not in Nashville. She's like, I can flip you around. Because really the weirdest easy. thing to me growing up is like having girls be like, I love how big you are. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. Like, Chubby like, chasers. Yeah, they're like, I like, yeah. Yeah. Like I like I like fat guys. Like I like bigger guys. Yeah, not so Nashville. have you ran into that as a girl ever been like, I love how short you Fuck are. Fuck no. Not in Nashville. Mitch finds all the chubby chasers. No, the chubby chasers find Mitch. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but Mitch is always with some girl that's way hotter than him. I mean, not that you're unattractive, <laughs> I'm just saying like What's so funny, McElroy? <laughs> <laughs> dude, Mitch be slaying some hot girls. <laughs> McElroy finds that funny. Have you seen this photo of Mitch? Let me find it while y'all oh, carry no. on a conversation. I've seen more photos of Mitch than I want to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember that one night we were in uh, Savannah, and I just remember I'm going to my bunk, and you say, look at my dick. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he was drunk that night. Yeah. That was the night you were, like, nursing that drunk girl to help. Well, that was what oh, I was about I to show that. I was about to throw oh, a picture yeah. of him. Fist bumping, you're fist bumping Trey, and she's puking in the trash can. Mm. I was, like, hanging out with her friend, and Mitch was, like, trying to, like, just, you know, be the nice guy, and the girl was, like, throwing up outside. Yeah, I don't have the photo. Yeah. I have, like, 100 photos on my phone. Well, every time we go somewhere, Trey's like, uh, if there's any friends, y'all have to entertain them. Yeah. So, that, that was being a, being a good friend. Yeah, he's been a good friend. What was the photo you going to have? It was you and Trey fist bumping, and oh, this girl's and the girl head's in up. the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her friend was like, do we need to go? And, and and I was like, no, she's okay. You just stay in there. You stay in there. <laughs> We're doing the back lounge shuffle. What? <laughs> back lane, you ever been back there? Oh, yeah. New York. In the back, uh, uh, Virginia. Oh, Virginia. McElwain got in my bunk one time. McElwain got in cage this weekend. Yeah. 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 What's up with that, McElwain? Oh, man. Is That's she pregnant? What the fuck? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> no so, should be determined. <laughs> so we, we went to this um, uh, karaoke bar in Avondale. Called, it's called the Brown Derby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got there a little late, and Terry's, like, talking to his cousin that he, you know, <laughs> it was, like, his long-lost cousin or something that he hadn't seen in years. So he's not, not even hanging out with the crew. Sounds like a Terry situation. And, yeah, it was a Terry situation for sure. And uh, – I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to karaoke my own song. And the lady that was running the karaoke was honestly kind of a bitch. I was like, so do we like tip you more money so we can like skip the line? She's like, no, I don't take bribes. I was like, well, that's how they do it in Nashville. So I was yeah. just kind of like figuring. Um, so me and Nikki T sang with arms wide open, but I made Abby get up there and, and sing it. And uh, and then me and McElwain did Dick Down in Dallas. And then... Did um, it have the words come up and everything? Oh, yeah, everything. It was cool. I was like, hey, fuck yeah, I'm karaoke in my own song. And then we got off stage, and then I don't know how it happened, but I was like, Mac, I want to propose to her. Oh, I know what I was doing. I was making everybody kiss. You of know? course you are. <laughs> you know, I am. I'm the instigator. 
I, when I got off stage, I looked at uh, one of my friends. I was like, all right, now y'all kiss. And these other people like kissed. And then I was like uh, trying to get um, Brennan to kiss Sarah Beth or something. And then I was like, McElwain, kiss that girl. Y'all kiss, y'all kiss. And they were like, no. And then, I don't know, McElwain just dropped to one knee. And like I had my phone <laughs> out and I just like um, like videoed it and then put it on uh uh, uh, like I videoed him and like asking them to get married. This guy was in the background. The whole bar was, was like, like I was like, she said yes. And the whole bar just like erupted, you know? Yeah. And I just took a video of it and I was like, I'm just going to post this on social oh, media got more and, likes and use got always you. you. And I was like, this is going to be cool. But then, then I put it on Instagram. People have been like calling McElwain all week. I think it was at whiskey jam Monday and Ward came up to him and was like, congratulations on your engagement. Dude. Did people buy you drinks that night? Did they think like they, I've, the the amount of messages I've had, dude. My sisters called me and asked if it was real. They were gonna they were gonna call Trey and be like, "Hey, did, did our brother just get engaged? We didn't know he was dating anybody." Hey, this is where you plug your registry if you need some fucking pet pots and pans. Hey, to yeah, make uh, we'll we'll take about uh, twenty cases of Miller Lite. Um, Three handles of fireball. Some fireball. Well, we got plenty of fireball, I think. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, oh, so no. basically, we McElwain was engaged. This afternoon, we made another post on t- on uh, TikTok and Instagram that his engagement ended, and he's single like a middle finger. So we're single. We're having fun with it, you know. We're, t- we're 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 using it to promote my music, and then this weekend, our plan is is to find a girl in the crowd that's ready to get fake engaged to him, and do it on stage. And yeah, film like it. Justin Bieber used to do one less on the. Girl. Girl, and he'd sing oh, it Oh man, hey, we can get Nick to play that in the background for sure. Either that no, or... it's gonna be always you. Yeah, I gotta play be. the song though. It was always <laughs> you. We're gonna That's do what Mitch is doing. Always you. Mitch is playing drums. I'm gonna no, be like, I can't play drums. No, we're gonna we're gonna get Ben up to play for that song. Are you know? we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put in the tracks, yeah. and you have to give a girl like a lap dance on stage, and then a propose. Lap dance. I'm gonna be like Matt. Get back there and play drums. We're gonna play this song to your girl, and she's gonna sit right by your drum kit. We're gonna film sit her on my lap. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Maybe we just do the uh, engagement. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just like, uh, we'll figure it out. But so, it'll be fun. Just, so you, it's all for good. social media. How's your engagement going right now? Is it? It's over. Oh, it's, it's over. over. They, they broke up today. It, it, Trey, okay. Trey announced it today. We're over. It's over. Yeah, what? I've got some girl already sent. I just, yeah, read I, the message to us, McElwain. Oh, uh, should, should I read DM, it? Yeah. The tree DM Monday right here. Let's find it. Uh, yeah. I got some messages I can read, too. I got one. Farron, Farron Rachel's one of our guests. You know Farron. She but, sent us. Uh, I did content on Farron today. She's yeah. great. She sent me a DM too. I figured it was worth reading. That she got? That she got, yeah. Oh, Lord. This girl said, Hi, darling. I heard you and your lady broke up, and I'm sorry to hear that. But, dot, 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 if you need <laughs> to lick, I mean, tits to comfort, I mean, a shoulder to cry on, I got you. She like I a, like the approach. Yeah. I, like yeah, I mean, approach. yes. I mean, it came out of nowhere. What I was you like, got Damn. for us, Mitch? I mean, would you let me, lick uh, it? Let me find them. Would I? He's yeah. licked worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't know on, a, that. on one of those, yeah, like long fireball nights. Yeah, yeah of course, Easy, easily, easily. Cool. I didn't know you could send people messages on TikTok. Um, yeah, they got to be following you, I think. I just get a so I had a a, a TikTok go viral recently. Oh, nice! Of me sitting in a plane. Um, oh, I was coming. I was coming back from Canada, and I sat next to this little lady, this old lady, and. She was fucking losing her mind the whole time trying to get a flight attendant. <laughs> and then finally the flight attendant got back there and she's like, yes. And she was like, can I move so I don't have to sit next to a big guy? And like the flight Is attendant. she Asian? Yeah. And the flight attendant looked at me and I was like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm big. Like, fuck. I'm in my lane though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not all over the fucking edge. Yeah. Big. Sucking and tucking. But yeah. you're not, you're not that big. Like, you're yeah. not. So like- she gets moved and, and I'm like, cool. Anyways, I, I, made, I made a video of it and I posted it on TikTok and it, it blew up. But I got like 3,000 comments on the video saying like, I would sit on your lap <laughs> if I was on the plane. <laughs> like all types of shit. Dude. Let's go. It's crazy. Chevy Chasers. Dude. But like a lot of it has like came over to uh, Instagram like requests. Do people really think that you got engaged? I just had a guy text me, Corey Daly. <laughs> He's like, dude, I'm trying not to laugh at Mac Wayne's engagement ending, but it's funny. I was like, yeah, he's never, he was never engaged. It's a joke. Yeah, I mean, we we just saw Priscilla earlier today, and she she completely thought that was real. Yeah, I don't even know which ones to read, dude. That's just a bunch of random. Like, I'd sit next to you. I'd sit on your lap. Farron sent me this one. This guy that sent sent it to her. It says, uh, 
Did you flip a switch because you're turning me on? <laughs> Damn. Send that to somebody right now, Bonner. I don't have anybody to send it to. Find somebody and send it. I'll send well, it to Darby. Farron, she'll, she'll call Farron, you right back. <laughs> Farron said, I bet he's 55 five living in his mom's basement or he's some asshole in Iraq wanting to scam me. <laughs> hey, at least he's saving on his rent living with his mom. Yeah, true. Send that to, to, send that to someone right now. Fuck, I'll send it to Darby. Well, Darby she said, answer. I pretty much feel that way about... Uh, Every man that slides in the DMs, I don't know if I like that, what that says about me or not. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's kind of like asking a woman if like she has lost weight. You know what I mean? It's not really a good compliment. Yeah. Or like being like, are you pregnant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude. <laughs> nope, just fat. <laughs> yeah, dude. You, you can't ever ask a woman if she's, if she's pregnant. Uh -uh. Even if she is pregnant yeah. as fuck, like you can't ask. <laughs> You know, you gotta let it come up. Have you casual. done it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I have. I've done that before and been. They've been like, "No, I'm not bringing." Why are you asking? I'm like, "Never mind, gotta go." <laughs> Never mind, gotta go. Never talk to me again. <laughs> well, I guess I go fuck myself. Yeah. Dude, I hate when you say something to somebody, like try to make like a really like slight joke, yeah. and like, and they're like, "Yeah, well, my dad killed himself three years ago, so it's not funny." And you're like, "Damn, dude, damn, damn. you just ruined my joke." Um. What else is going on? Uh, yeah, going to Colorado. Yeah, we're going to Colorado. Mitch, you coming to Colorado? Yeah, because we're going snowboarding. Are we? Yeah. After or what? Uh, I don't know. I talked to Cape about it, and I said, if we go to Colorado, we have to snowboard. And he was like, stay, great idea. Stay, go snowboarding, and then come back that week. That could yeah. be cool. It's Grizzly Rose, right? Yeah. 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 I've never snowboarded in my life. Me either. So I was like, I want to do that. We don't Damn, have anything do on that. that. We don't have anything on that Saturday. Well, you better save your coins up there, Matt Coyne. Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Murphy goes out there all the time. It's, yeah. it's well, we don't have to do it the Murphy way, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Murphy really. kind of Murphy has it, so he can do it. Yeah. Um, when is that, dude? I'm so this thing seventeenth. Yeah, we're gonna miss Ella's Opry debut. I know. Yeah, I that know. sucks. It sucks. She's gonna hate me. Hooray! Forever. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Just um, kidding, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm back on my diet. I got off during Christmas. I gained five, I gained five pounds. That's but, not a lot, though. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't do too bad. I fluctuate five pounds every day. Yeah. What do you weigh yourself in the morning? And then at night, you're like, "Fuck, I ate like a fat ass today." Well, I'll just like lose five pounds in my sleep. Just yeah, <laughs> just sweating. Yeah, just <laughs> just breathing. I guess I, God, I can feel this bacon coming out of my pores. Are you still playing World of Warcraft? No, dude, I haven't played World of Warcraft Fuck. in a long time. I miss it, but... What are you playing? Uh, nothing right now. But you're, what happened to your computer? Something got fried, right? Yeah, my hard drive. My, fuck happened? My solid state drive, actually. Too, too much, much, weird, Justin just too went much in. weird porn. Dude, it could have been Justin, you know? It went into the fucking... Justin doesn't know how to use anything with technology. So, um, one time, Justin doesn't know how to use a thermostat. I mean, so, I don't either. I fucking changed my dude, shit once a year. he'll set the temp to like 90 it was, or something. He set it on 84 one day, and I walked upstairs, and like, it was fucking hot. <laughs> like a toast. And I was like, what's going on, dude? And I looked, it was 84, and I knocked on his door. I said, hey, man, did you did you turn the heat on? He's like, yeah, I was cold. I was like, why don't you just turn it to like, I don't know, 70? 71. Yeah, something. And he was like, oh, uh, I don't really know how it works, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, dude, it's hot as fuck. Hey, you in there with a the fucking blow torch to your computer? Yeah, I mean... Dude, he could have, you know. There's, there's really no telling. He doesn't know how to turn the computer Dude, on. Dude, when I lived at the halfway house, we weren't allowed to, uh, to have the thermostat um, below seventy one or above seventy three. That's ridiculous. What's your like threshold? If you, you go, you ask a girl like, "Hey, what do you keep your thermostat on? What are you hoping for?" Sixty eight. Sixty eight. Yep. Uh, Sixty eight. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Fuck, McElwain. McElwain's favorite number. I'm 68, dude. It needs to be 68. In the summer, like, let's get that bitch. Just co let's be able to hang meat in there. You know? <laughs> yeah. In the summer, dude, I'll help pay the but power In the bill winter, I'll just turn it off. Yeah. So and open I mean, a window. Yeah. Yeah. Crack a window That's in the there. Mine's set on 62 right now, heat, so that it never turns on. Yeah. 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 So you what, can always just put a hoodie on and lounge. Yeah, for sure. Sure. What else we got going on? Is that it? You have a song coming out, Mexican Jail will be out yeah, by Mexican the time Jail this is out. Yeah, Mexican Jail will be out. You know, um, Cooper Allen and Thomas Mack. It was pretty fun collaborating with those guys. They're Did the uh, goggles pretty, hurt your head in the music video? No, but it was hilarious, wasn't it? That's like me cutting onions. Oh, you put on goggles to cut Fuck onions? Fuck yeah, I hate crying because that shit. Then your, your fucking eyes hurt the rest of the <laughs> like, day. Like, what kind of goggles? Like, like the swim like, goggles. <laughs> it, no pressure and no bullshit gets in there, yeah. I swear to God. I have swim goggles. I felt like you got them. You, you like... Pull, like pulled that off on them that they didn't know it was going to happen because I saw the video and they like looked at you and was like what the hell are you wearing? No, we were going for it. It was what funny. Else? We did it. Are you ever going to put more music out? Actually, yes. 
When? Are you? Uh, yeah, me and Ben are working. Is it going to be emo For music? Real? Or? Sad as fuck. Yeah, you didn't That's hear about exciting. it? exciting. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I think me and Ben are going to work on something. Cool. Is it going to charge you out the ass or what? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. You're rich. You got it. I don't know. Between your normal job and my job, you yeah. should be doing pretty good. You're rich as fuck. Damn, not rich like Mitch. Hey, we, we still need to update. Have you washed it's your not- sheets? No, fuck no, Mac. When I bought new sheets. Oh, you bought, okay. You well, don't wash your sheets? I, no. I haven't, I've washed them once since 2013. Well, uh, he just <laughs> bought some new ones. So I bought them. I, I haven't put them on, but I have. Oh, you had put them on? What the, wait a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know about this? <laughs> no, you have the same set of sheets from 2013. We've, we've been doing this DM Monday podcast for, what, uh, probably nine months now, and and he said he hasn't changed the sheets since, or even Do washed them. Yours? I wash them like every two weeks. It's a lot of fucking work. <laughs> you washed your pillowcase? Fuck no, dude. I brought that bitch to Bonnaroo and still hadn't washed it. Your pillowcase, you don't take off and wash. No, I brought it to Bonnaroo and didn't wash it. Dude, that's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Do you shower? <laughs> Wednesdays and Sundays, yeah. Really? I mean, and if I like go dude, out, yeah. Do you yeah. still shave your, pi- your uh, yeah, privates Wednesdays. pretty regularly? Yeah, on Wednesdays. No. Nice. Uh-huh. Hey, so he stays groomed, but he don't, it, like, he'll come on the road with us. Bonner, we'll shower the entire time. You got to start washing yeah, your I don't, sheets, I don't dude. shower a whole lot on the road. You shower Wednesday and Sunday? That's it? I shower <laughs> like if I go out and do stuff, but most of the time I'm just sitting at the house. Damn. Do you not feel gross? I shower. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I guess. I don't know. What if you jerky jerky on yourself? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the toilet's for. No, I don't know. Are you aiming to the toilet? <laughs> no. Nah. Like stand over the toilet and beat off. <laughs> That's I don't know. a serial killer. <laughs> I don't know. See, fuck All right, that. Here's a real question. Have y'all ever jerked off at work before? No. Uh, well, we work on the roads. So What's like, considered work? I mean, yeah. I mean, like when you had a normal job. Like if you ever had an office job, did you ever just go into the bathroom? Newspaper, Michael Wayne? Jerk it. Man, I, kill had like a- I have. I've jerked off. I jerked off at Bradford plenty of times. I never did. I mean, I've obviously thought about it, but yeah. I my mom have you ever, watching this. Have you ever it- jerked off while driving? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah everybody's done that. I haven't, dude. You haven't? You uh-huh. gotta try it. It's fun. Dude, when that I was, sounds dangerous. It's, no, it's a whole new experience. Way home. I, so, I've only been... Have you ever been caught jerking off before? No. Um, unfortunately not. I don't, I don't... I don't know. I got I caught so. jerking off once. By I used to work with this guy at Hardy's, and he came over to my house and just walked in the door, and I was just straight, beat, just gunning myself down. He just came to your house, and your door was unlocked. You worked right? at Hardy's? Yeah, I worked at Hardy's. <laughs> This is bef- this is uh before I got sober, you know. Yeah, before Christ, you know. Um, but anyways, hey, do you remember how hard it was to jerk off drunk? Mm-hmm. It's so um. hard, dude. <laughs> McElwain, can you can you agree? McElwain's never came. Hold on, what, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. We used to have this rule that McElwain was the only person allowed to jerk off in the van because he's the only person that couldn't come. <laughs> so you have to ever worry about sitting in semen, you know. Yeah, yeah Burrell did it one time and uh, he had COVID the next day. Yeah, COVID. one day COVID. <laughs> Bonner broke the merch record that night. I did. Did, I did. You? Fuck Burrell. Uh, yeah. Hell um, yeah. The wild Griggs. What's the weirdest place you've ever jerked off? The bandwagon? Probably the car. I never. <laughs> the I, could, I, could, I, I couldn't get hard in the bandwagon because McElwain would get drunk and just crawl into my fucking bunk. Everybody off. else is trying to jerk you off. You were playing that uh, what's the, Farmville or uh, Animal Crossing. Animal what's Crossing. the weird? What's the weirdest uh, place you guys have ever had sex? I mean, my car. But I mean, I think most people have had sex in the car. I don't fit in the car very well. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine was at Red Door. Oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty brutal, dude. Yikes. I can't believe that happened. Fuck Red Door, literally. <laughs> My favorite thing is Cape's going to watch this like this. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, y'all, thank y'all for uh, tuning in today to the DM Monday podcast. Here's our interview with Brian Martin. Uh, What kind of headphones are those? Fuck if I know. Jack off headphones. That's what McAway jacks off with that back home. No, I needed some headphones over here. Jack, jack, and no. Those those don't work as good as the the AKGs. I know. This sounds like fucking shit. (laughs) Those look nice, though. Well, it's, but they're fucking not. I mean, they cost like 60 bucks, but I think these cost like 300 Oh, damn. damn. All right, guys. What's up? Trey Lewis here. Welcome to episode 26 of the DM Monday podcast. Today, our guest is Brian Martin. Woo! <laughs> Y'all calm down now. We ain't even got started yet. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we had some shit go down this weekend. We played a hometown show in Birmingham. Mitch, what did you think about the show? It was insane. Right? Yeah. yeah. The new light show. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah, I think it's. I think it helped because we didn't. Uh, we didn't um, play in Birmingham for like a year. You know. 
Yeah, like a year to the day, right? Like What's that, it like when you go home and play hometown shows? Not good. Not good? <laughs> not yet. See, that's what not I'm yet. saying. Like, not good yet. It's like usually like, because I always think like the last place for you to get famous is in your hometown. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, my hometown hates me. Yeah. You know, that, that's my biggest thing like right now, you know, is we just, my first sold out show was like last uh, weekend and it was in Virginia. How'd that feel? It, it felt crazy because it was literally like within like a month. I was like, I can usually walk across the bar, watch the opener, you know, and I have yeah. to do enough. Maybe one One person. person like, hey, can I take a picture? And I'm like, yeah. And then literally this one was like people were standing outside waiting for like two hours. I said, what the hell happened here? Like somebody so, yeah. So you've been kicking around TikTok for a while. I think that's where me and you and uh, first originally met, right? You yeah. were living in Texas. Living where, in Texas. Is that where you're from, Texas, right? Yeah, I'm from Louisiana on the border of Texas. But okay. My family's from my daddy's family's from San Antonio, Texas, yeah. and all over there. So I was kind of dropped off right there on the river in Louisiana. So uh, and I'm just north enough to where they don't accept me in Louisiana. Yeah. So I'm just so, <laughs> so your first song to kind of pop off to, on TikTok was it Beauty and the Struggle? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, Beauty and the Struggle. And man. Did, so did that put you in touch with um, with uh, uh, Average Joe's or what? Yeah, that's the one that uh, kind of you know I was doing a deal with like a. I was pretty much done with it, and then I I wrote that song, and uh, Dirtified, which was Lenny Cooper. Oh yeah, uh, he he had a little branch off of Average Joe's, and I was there for about I want to say about six months or so, and then uh, everything kind of switched over to Average Joe's when you know More Than Shine came out, and yeah, and then we just kind of. It's been kicking ever since. For since. yeah, I, I played at uh, Lenny Cooper's place. Yeah, in, uh, South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah, it's a big last, ass place. Last year, you yeah. been in there? Yeah, dude, we had a blast down there. Um, that was a really fun. Skyline, day. man. Skyline. That's it. That was one of my first shows uh, when I came out um, out there to South Carolina. I was like, yeah. damn, I, you know, it was crazy to meet it. Even then, you know, when Beauty and the Struggle. Yeah, that people actually knew who I was in South Carolina. Even if it's only five, you're like, holy shit, we're yeah. in South Carolina. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, what's that song? Mud, Mud Creek. Oh yeah, uh, Mud Diggers. Mud Diggers. Mud diggers. Yeah. yeah, sling the mud by the paint. Yeah, yeah, Mud Diggers. <laughs> um, all right, so Beauty and the Struggle kind of pops off, and that's where like I think either you messaged me or we got or I was on your yeah. live or you were on my live yeah. or something like that. Man, I've, I've been following you. You know, I liked a lot of your stuff. Then you know, of course, Dick Down in yeah. Dallas was like, "Okay, he he went he went off and did something different, and he's done shook the whole world up." Yeah, it kind of it kind of was like a inspiration to me too, like some of the things that I'd been thinking about, you know, yeah. uh, stepping outside of that normal zone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, I I jumped in your live, and I think that's how we. Yeah, I think it was like you know, of course, everybody on on TikTok knew who I was because of the Dick Down in Dallas thing, but, like, you were one of the ones that, like, listened to the other stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I knew that from, like, day one. Yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, so I feel like sometimes, you know, you, you meet people in this business and it's like, you can tell what kind of person person they, you know, they are. And, like, with me and the nature of Dick Down in Dallas, it was like, I either found people that were like, this guy's crazy, you know, and they were kind of, like, laughing at me, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, you're laughing with me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Me and Mitch are both. What? (laughs) Me and Mitch are both. (laughs) Both, yeah, exactly. You know, it's kind of like that that feeling of going, man, you know, that's a a big-ass step, man. Like, to step out and go outside of that comfort zone, that showed me a lot about, like, your – Cause I know your little, you know, tired song, and, and I know that you battle a lot of same demons yeah. I do. So it's like for you to step outside that comfort zone. And we've written together yeah, now, and yeah. you know, so all it, that it's stuff. it's badass, man. Like I said, it, it it uh, it was cool. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I hear everybody else going, oh, what the hell is going on with this? I'm like, yeah. I mean, think think about the balls it took to j- jump out there and do that, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, um, uh, so that happens. You're rocking along. I know we've kind of stayed in contact. Probably, what did we like? Pro- write probably in February last year. Yeah, I said I want to write something funny. <laughs> I said I want to write something uh, fun and upbeat. And I think we wrote yeah. the most depressing song well, ever. I don't even remember what that song was called, but <laughs> no, we wrote it with my. Friend. It's actually inspirational. Though. It's really yeah. inspirational, man. It's called "No Good at Giving Up." Yeah, that's yeah. right. No good at giving up. And we wrote it with um, your your with manager. Buddy. Yeah. No, we wrote it with Nolan. No, he passed it. away in July. Do what? Yeah, uh, overdose. Crazy. Really? Yeah, he's been. He's. Um, we've been friends for a long time, and I knew that he struggled with addiction and stuff. And uh, yeah, man, he just he couldn't get her right. So. Um, and that's that's the sad part about like 
you know, being a songwriter too. Yeah. It's like so you gotta learn how to disconnect yourself. You know, you, you go to you go there to write a song and yeah. you have to learn to disconnect yourself. And that's yeah. as a writer, that's my hardest thing is like when I play a song on stage, it takes me right back to where I was. So yeah. I'm like, God, if you can give me one more gift, give me a gift yeah. of separating that so I can get up on stage and not be so uh so deep off in those <laughs> yeah, the Place blues, them. yeah. Because yeah. I mean, um, everybody wants to have a good time, man. So I, I, I can't remember what it was. I, I remember I was on TikTok one day and I saw the the Outlaw Shit song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, is yeah. That, what has the hook land? Uh, everybody wants to be. An Everyone, outlaw. Everyone's an outlaw to this time. Do outlaw, outlaw shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, hell yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And uh, that song kind of popped off for you a little yeah. bit, didn't it? That one popped off, and, and it was kind of like I'd heard that saying my whole life, you know. And so I was thinking to myself, you know. Let's do something a little bit different. And I think that was the first song I ever threw a cuss word in there. So that's a little Trey Lewis inspiration. Oh, no. Hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hey, hey, Dad. <laughs> you know, but no, that was so cool, though, because I, I, I sent it to him and he was like, that's how he, he said, that's how you raised. That's how, you know, that's how I come up. I never had nobody uh, do nothing for me. And I always had to just kind of get it on my own and work for it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you, uh, did you, so when did you move? I know you, when did you move here? Cause your family's here now, right? I want to say it was in, uh, end of 21. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think right at the end of 21, I moved, uh, did the deal with Average Joe's. And then I was like, hey, man, you know, I got to get my family up here too. So after my pub deal went through, I just said, I moved them up here. We got a place outside of town. Yeah. And, uh, cause I like to be out there in the middle of nowhere just to, Kind of had that feeling of freedom, you know? Yeah, I can't decide of like what I want to do. Like, if I want to buy a house in town or if I want to be out, like, you know, the act, the natural redneck in me is like, yeah, let's move out of town. But, you know, yeah. I think like once I get out there, I'm not going to want to drive down here to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I've always kind of like been up, you know, if I had to get up early an hour, yeah. And, you know, it actually helped me because uh, I would get up an hour and a half because I'm, I run late anyway. And, uh, so I like to be out there, you know, I'm about, if I buy a place, I'm thinking about buying one with some acreage and get the baby some horses and stuff like that, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Keep it, uh, keep it like it was back home. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So, and you write most of your songs by yourself. That's the cool <laughs> thing about you. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, you know, it's kind of like what we deal with every day. Uh, a lot of times, I think that people talk to me and they're like, uh, where do you get the inspiration from your song? I said, really and truly. Every day when I come home from work, if I was going through something or if I was at work, I'd be thinking about it. And I, yeah. and I can't say nothing. I'm not a good speaker. So it's like yeah. if I had something I really needed to say, I, it all come out in a in song. song. And yeah. I didn't know how to – I don't know music. I don't know nothing about what chords I'm playing or anything. All I know is that it, it resonates with me. And I, yeah. That's, that's the key I'm singing in. So Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So – um so let's talk about the song you got going viral right now. You're streaming what, like, <laughs> how much a week? Man, you know, like I said, last week it it doubled again. It was already at the biggest, the highest streaming I ever yeah. had. It was like just on Spotify, it was like a hundred thousand streams a day, and then yeah. it doubled to like two hundred thousand streams a day. And then you know now it's doing on Spotify. I think all my songs together are doing like five point five million. Dude, that's awesome. I ain't ever seen. And it's it, nuts. It's it it literally like a. Since when I moved up here, I'd done 200,000 streams the year before, and I've been yeah. 15 years chasing this shit. Yeah. You know? And then that year, it did 12 million. Or the next year, it did 12 million. And then the, this last year, it did 50. It seems like the growth is, I can't explain the growth. Yeah. But like, I'm thankful for it. But now it's getting close to where it's doing, every year, it's doing like in a month what it was doing last year. Yeah. So now it's getting to the point where it's doing in a month what it did last year and i don't know where it's going from here but it's like i didn't expect to be here anyway so if it don't go any further than this i've already been blessed beyond yeah anything yeah. else so uh so how did you uh did you write when did you write that song i wrote that with my uh drummer uh my old yeah. drummer uh burn uh, yeah me and him was sitting in the house and i said hey man i said uh is this back in texas or is this, this was uh over here in ten- okay at, yeah at, at the house now i said I got something, man. But he's not playing drums with you anymore. He's not right now, but he's yeah. he's gonna be back working security pretty soon. Probably. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's my go-to guy, man. But uh, I was sitting there and I was like, I want to write something. I just want to sing something because yeah. I've always been 
get down in that, you know, that mellow yeah. monotone voice. And, yeah. And I just started belting, man. And uh, we just started vibing. Didn't matter, you know, what it was. It was just kind of like taking a, taking a story as it was playing out in our minds. And, and we ride just went, Phew. And, I, and I said, that felt good, man. Yeah. Literally just to be able to get outside of the bullshit and what I go through and just to write something fun. Yeah. And I and you know, it paid off, man. I think a lot of people just wanna that's what they look People just wanna have a good time and yeah. laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, it, and if it leads whether it's about penises or yeah. butts or, or riding. Yeah. You know? If it leads <laughs> if it leads somebody down the road of, of uh if they have a bad day and they accidentally stumble on a song that helps them through something, then yeah. That's what we do too. Yeah. So uh how did you get uh, what so you put the sound on TikTok? Like, how, how did all that process happen? So I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, I kind of was like seeing how I'm not very social, other than TikTok. I'm not yeah. very social media uh, savvy. savvy. Yeah. yeah. So I was like looking at everybody's. I was scrolling through Instagram <clears throat> and I realized that you know Bailey's showing up at every three videos. You don't, you know, it don't matter. He's just showing up. And at first, I'm thinking to myself, when I go to release a song, I don't like to push a reel out every day because I'm. I was always like, I don't want to bug nobody. But at the same time, I'm going, that's dumb. You know, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I, it's not bugging people. If they if they hear the song and they like the song, then they listen to it. If they hear the song and they don't like the song, they scroll on. And so mm -hmm. I literally just took that mentality on reels and just started posting like 10. On Instagram you know, or on, TikTok? On, ti yeah. on Facebook and uh, on like uh, Instagram and, and everywhere else. Yeah. And then literally that's what blew everything up was that. Facebook this last time was yeah. these people at this show uh, this last time in Virginia 90% of them said I only heard about you in the last you know three months yeah. uh, from Facebook Reels and that that's kind of like one of those okay you know that's how that's how you play this game without having to yeah that's you know, like you know TikTok's been being kind of lame lately yeah, yeah. but that just goes to show you that and Facebook oldest, pays good <laughs> yeah the oldest trick in the book is facebook remember kane yeah. brown went viral on on facebook you know like there's more than just tiktok you know like i got like a thousand songs like from on facebook yeah where i've been spending like 10 years building like forty five thousand followers where yeah. like i said i'd sit on the couch i'd, I'd still be in my oil field clothes or yeah. whatever i'd come sit down and write a song and I, anytime i wrote something i just threw it out there mm -hmm. i never it was always like you know what do you call that uh let the people judge it, yeah, know, and let them, you know, yeah. like, and learn from, them, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, not give a shit. Yeah. So you know, I threw it out there, told my story. A lot of people related to it, but in ten years, it took to get forty five thousand followers. Yeah. In like a week, it jumped to a hundred thousand because of Facebook Reels jumping off. Like yeah, yeah, so that's crazy. I, was, I seem like it feels like every time I get on TikTok or whatever, I I see that sound. You know, somebody's using. Yeah, it. that's pretty cool. It is cool, man. And I think it, it's different than what I've, I've always been one of those kind of guys like you. Like, I don't get put in a box. Like yeah. If somebody tell me that, oh, well, he, you know, he sings a certain song or a certain kind of song. And, you know, like, well, everything I'm doing now, wolves cry and everything. It's always kind of like, how can I tell another part of my story in a different way and stay in my own lane? Yeah. You know, because I think that it gets so watered down sometimes. And it's like, if I can just jump over here and show some of my, bluesy side from Louisiana yeah. and then if I can do my western stuff show my, my my cowboy side my native side you know so it's like there's just so many different cultures mixed right there where I'm from yeah I was uh man I've been in this like um uh, you know I'm a spiritual guy and, and you know I, I pray and do all that stuff but I've just been on this real big kick lately of just like trusting God and and being my path you know and I mean I think that like you're a real prime example of that I remember I talked to you probably six months ago when you were like trying to figure out you know like what you're going to do as far as touring and all that stuff yeah. and now you know here you are six months later or whatever and you got this song popping off you're about to go on tour with the Warren Siders and <laughs> yeah. you know like you, you talk about you know you got people waiting outside you know it's all surreal yeah, man, it's kind of it, crazy but it it's is, like it's it's just like you said, I think when we talked about it, I asked you the same thing. Yeah. I think you, you know, you were selling just down, set, you know, selling out shows. Yeah. And I, I was like, man, I said, uh, and I'm from the outside of Nashville. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know the circuit here. So I was yeah. an outsider. Yeah. You know? So like I ran the Texas circuit. I ran, yeah. you know, for years in Texas and only had a few shows in Louisiana, but I ran that circuit 
And I was kind of scared or intimidated, yeah, more or less, of coming up here because, yeah. you know, you get up here and there's so many people. The guy who brings you anything is is a doing the same thing you're doing, mm-hmm. and it's like, how do I get up there and like try to be? You know, I've never co-wrote, yeah, with anybody, so you know, it was intimidating. But me and you had that talk, and I just kind of realized that hey, if I can, I. Did, just did my first co-write with uh, Scott Sean White and uh, oh, nice. Helene, and we're putting it out. And then that guy, Cameron Havens, that was there today, yeah. I did my first outside cut that I didn't have nothing to do with. I'm, awesome. I just put yeah. it on hold. So. How's that feel? Does that feel weird for you? It's weird, but at the same time, I realized it. Helen we, uh, Cronin, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, feel, I feel like I came here and I wanted to be a writer. Yeah, you know, because the artist thing is great. I'm doing great things with the artist thing, but I'm always going to be the writer. Yeah. So when I came here and I met the writers and I saw how, you know, they have to live day to day just hustling. Like yeah. I mean, it's literally like next next sausage egg and cheese biscuit hustling. Like, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So I said, hey, if if I'm winning, I want all of us to win. So it, and if there's some a good song is a good song whether I was on it or not. Yeah. And you know to do an outside cut. It's not a pride thing for me because now I realize that, you know, sometimes I just think at the time, well, I write for a whole bunch of people. And then I go home and I can't write shit for myself. I can yeah. write a million songs for somebody it's else. It's like, you know, I mean, you've already proved to yourself that you have the ability to write to write songs. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's like, there's a million songwriters here in town that do this shit for a living. So, I mean, if like you hear a song that strikes a nerve with you and you feel like it would be a good message and your fans would like it, then why not? If it's, you know, not only going to change songwriters' lives, it's going to change that person's yeah. life, then, you know, might as well. Yeah, now that's a, that song hit me too, man, because he sent me a couple of them. One of them was really, really deep too. It's called Hold the Truth. Yeah. And I was like, I like that one too. But, you know, with me going into sobriety and doing all this, I said, this one's the one that's really resonating with me. It's called My Demons Don't Sleep. Yeah. And it's because, you know, the whole time I was drinking, I was, putting that stuff away i was kind of like okay i can get drunk enough to f- forget it for a second and then you know it just comes back 10 times harder tomorrow yeah but yeah my name is on sleep song i think it was him and casey tindall and uh i can't remember who the other writer was but it just hit me it just what hit me. uh what made you want to um what made you want to quit drinking what's the story behind that <laughs> I mean, we all have that. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, I know th- you got a car wreck. We don't got to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, to. no, it's fine. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I wanted to quit drinking because, well, I mean, I quit for six years at one time. Yeah. And then I went through some stuff like a uh, relationship with my wife. We've been together 15 years, and we were split up for about a year. And uh, and I just kind of went down this rabbit hole of, uh, you know, I was the one who walked away, but she's the one who moved on. Yeah. And so, like, that came up in a writing session one day, too. I was like, you know, we're leaving. You left me. Yeah. You know? And so I kind of just turned into this. Because I was always a fixer, man. I had deep, dark stuff uh, when I was a kid. <clears throat> like, when I when I got uh, old enough, I was already doing, you know, all that stuff, the drugs and stuff. So she was always constantly fixing me. And I was always constantly replacing it with something else, mm-hmm. trying to make it seem a little bit better than the next thing. And, uh but finally, you know, she, we split, and I, I went back to alcohol, and I loved it too much, and I, it just because, it just takes you back to that moment where you realize like, well now I don't have nobody, and uh, but I love the hell out of drinking. Yeah. And then I went full on head on with it, and that that led to two days before my divorce, I just went off a cliff, uh, like a little. That was foot. here, right? It was in Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I wound up in I- ICU. My uh, my J forty five that I my drain guitar I finally got went through. You know, went out the vehicle and destroyed it. I was more <laughs> worried about the uh, guitar when I woke up than I was yeah. myself. But yeah, it was rough, man. I walked ten miles back to the nearest town, and only had only had a combine pass me over in Kentucky, and I went over and got in. Uh, Got a, everything kind of clicked to me that I wasn't nothing without my family, yeah. but my babies. You know, I I had that get up and go every time I had to get up and go to work yeah. for them. But without them, I was like, I'm worthless. Yeah, you know. And that's when I wrote Beauty in the Struggle, and that's when I came back home and 
we made everything right and she forgave me and uh i really couldn't find nothing that she ever needed forgiven for yeah. <laughs> so, so i was like yeah. that's what fucked me up yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah man it's a it's one of those things man i think that we all come from different places and my deal has always been to write it in a song or to deal with it in my own way but like i said there's times when i just kind of think to myself you probably could have got away with not doing that, you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. And it's always self-learning, like like learning, let's not do that. Learning how to do things by doing them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Somebody tell you it's can't do way. something, man. Like, that's my biggest thing. Somebody tells me I can't, like, in, in the oil field, you know, they say, I bet you can't fix that thing, you know, or I bet you can't do this, and I bet you can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I'll take about 10 scars, but I'll do it. Yeah. You know? What was Brian Martin as like as a kid? Oh, shit. I was being drug around at six years old and uh, singing. And uh, my oh, so mom, you've been doing this shit your whole life. My mama was a, a, a singer. She sang in like for the Louisiana Hayride and all that stuff back mm-hmm. in the day. Uh, David Houston, Fair and Young, and all them. So I sang from six till I was thirteen. I got burned out and I went to riding bulls and and doing oh, rodeo nice. and. Uh, but yeah, all that time from six to thirteen, I was like stuck in a. A room with a karaoke machine trying to learn a song for a festival and i'm like i hate this i just want to get out of this room <laughs> and then songwriting brought me back man it's like, so so i'm gonna talk about your riding bulls i mean you break, yeah. you break some bones or what man i got uh my liver uh, i got my liver stepped on i got my, <laughs> my teeth knocked out how does your liver get stepped on <laughs> i don't know but it felt it what, is that? <laughs> what does it feel like to get your liver stepped on yeah uh, I don't know. I thought the bull had, that's like right I, here. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it now after all the whiskey. I know exactly yeah. where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, like the bull, yeah, like I said, I did that for a while and I wasn't no good. I just, I, I, I kept trying, but you know, I was like, shit, I'm a little, a little lumpy here and I'm a little off center and I keep falling off. Uh, but I was, I would keep getting back on and, uh, I loved it. I fell in love with adrenaline then, man. I fell yeah. in love with, like that and I, when i got closer to like 17 started dirt track racing doing dirt track you know because oh, back nice. home man that's like if you take me somewhere to see something yeah i, I want to do, do it, it. I, ain't, yeah. I ain't gonna come and watch i'm not a spectator yeah. man like put, how much does it take to get one of them cars i traded one of my best trucks i ever had in my life it was like 85 candy red i wish to god i hadn't traded it uh diamond tuck ceilings you know yeah. all that shit I, I took it to one of a friend of mine. I said, oh, I'll trade you this for that, that dirt track car. Being a kid. That's you know, an expensive <laughs> hobby right there, yeah. that dirt track racing. Ain't it? it was like a $1,700 car, and I traded a, a truck that's worth like probably twenty five grand now. Damn. <laughs> did you, were you any good at dirt track racing, or yeah. did you wreck a lot, or what? I was I was good until I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I, I mean, at first, yeah, I was no good at all. I, yeah. That, nobody told me that. I always thought you just hit the gas and run with it, man. Yeah. But, you know, you know, being being a kid, I was like, as long as I get in in a curve and I got somebody on the outside of me, yeah, you're just, I can keep them going. Oh, yeah. So, they don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So how long did you do the dirt track racing? About, about two years. Yeah. Until I had a real bad wreck and couldn't afford to fix the car, and uh, I was like, shit. I got to go to work anyway. So I just went to work. So did you get a job in the old field or what? Yeah, 18th birthday, I quit high school and went to work on a rig. Uh, so you're a high school dropout too? Yes, sir. Damn. I got a 10th grade uh, two-time failure. <laughs> two-time? Oh, yeah, failed I failed twice. twice yeah. Failed twice. Nice. Yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. Did you fail? You failed? School? Oh, I failed a bunch of classes, yeah. Really? Yeah. Were you held back or what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I graduated. And I got you graduated. two college degrees now, baby. Damn it! But so, they, boy, they didn't want to let me through high school. I I went back and like. Did in. you just like? I mean, I know you're smart as fuck. Did you just like not? Get Dude, shit? I was just a, I was just a class clown. I mean, man. yeah, I, mean, I went in there every you day. Hacked. He ha- you you missed this, but on our last episode, Mitch told us a story about how he got a how to hack for dummies book, and he hacked the school computer <laughs> yeah well, that was in sixth grade that yeah. is crazy in high school man. i just didn't care man i was there to like get a laugh you know? yeah. yeah i just wanted to laugh and have fun and get through the day because going home was like the worst part of my day you know? oh, you get a lot of weapons or what uh no what do you no. mean like 
at yeah. home, yeah, like your grandparents. Well, I, don't know. I went home and fought my stepdad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we went home and fought, dude. That was what that was. Yeah, damn. So school was like my getaway for the day, man. When did you move in with your grandma? Me in sixth grade, but then I was okay. forced to move back in with my mom and stepdad. Oh, dang, that sucks. Anyway, so you went to the oil field. How, what got you into that? What was? Did you already have like a friend there or parents? Or? Uh, I had my family. My family was in it, and uh, one of my uncles was a driller, and so he told me. He said, "Hey." They ain't hiring unless you got six months experience. And I said, well, I don't have six months experience. He's like, yeah, you do. I was like, no, I don't. I'm just turning 18, man. I'm 18 in orientation going to work. And he's like, just tell them you got six months experience. I was like, okay. And then I get in and I uh, get up there and they're like, so you got six months experience. I was like, good. You show these other hands because we just, these, these they're fresh out of high school. I'm like, oh, shit. And then they re- realize real quick. Uh, when I don't even know where the grease fitting is for the draw works, or I'm like, uh, okay, I got you. And they had me as a chain hand, so like I was learning how to throw it, throw a spinning chain. And uh, the driller come up to me and he goes, "You ain't got shit." Do you? I was like, "No." And he's like, "You going to by the end of the day?" And so literally, <laughs> literally I, I just kind of got thrown to the wolves with it. And he said, "You're gonna learn six months in about eight hours, so you better get ready for it." And then the rest of the week, I was just out there hustling. Trying to learn it, and ever since I just found this like a uh, drive, like you know that I guess I got thrown into it just right because that day I had to prove myself enough to keep my job, yeah. and ever since I've been proving myself just to just to keep it going, man. And I've been up, you know, the oil field is always an up and down thing, like depending on who's sitting in a house, or, you know what I mean. And if uh, things are going up, or things are going down, they're gonna kick <clears throat> kick me, you know, back to floors or. I've been back from dairy can to floor hand and worked my way back up. It's literally like the craziest thing in the world, but there's so many people that's been out there for 20 years that have worked their way up. And then whenever things go down, they have to do uh, cuts. So they just kind of start bumping everybody back down. And then it's like, as soon as you get to where you're wanting to go, it's like you got to start all over again. Was music still hated at this point at 18 years old? You know, did you still kind of push it out? I, I didn't hate it. Uh, I was starting to do it, but uh, when I started to do it this time, I was like, okay, I'm doing it on my own terms. Yeah. So then I thought, well, if I do it on my own terms and I can write a song and I'm learning how to play a guitar, uh, which I didn't do for a while, but I was like, I'm just going to go out there and play rock star, man. And uh, it, it it looked cool, but it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a deal. Like, you know, I look back on it now as like, Thank God, where I thought I should be then, I wasn't because I'd have just been another story, yeah. going down the going down the drain, man. Because I I was writing songs that didn't have no substance. I was writing, uh, I mean they were good songs, but at the same time, when I when I got saved, when I got baptized, when I gave up drinking the first time, yeah, like I just got on fire. And I started. I wrote. I started writing country gospel. I wrote like eight hundred country gospel songs in like three years. And I and some people, you know, I had a minister cut one and just started taking everything that I'd I'd been through and seen and just turned it into a testimony. And ever yeah. since, it's been the same thing. It's just been a little bit more outlaw. Yeah. <laughs> How old were you when that started? When you got saved? That was uh twenty one. I was twenty. I was twenty one. I I quit drinking cool. and kind of just. Kept on rolling, man. It was a, uh, it was a good experience. Like I said, and I, even now I look at it as if I did the, did what God called me to do because I'm able to go out and sing my songs and know that there's there's nothing but truth in it. Yeah. So like as long as there's mm-hmm. truth in it, there, it's Him in it. Yeah. You know? right. For sure. For sure. So you said you made some some stupid financial decisions driving oh, the truck shit. for the yeah for the dirt track. So when you turned 18, you're getting oil field money. What's oh, uh, what's like the first purchase? What's on your mind at eighteen? Oh my god, the arcade at the boardwalk in Shreveport. I was like, my cousin was like, let's go to the arcade. And that became like a deal that was. A st- oh my god, I could have bought a house, man. <laughs> we and I didn't. We didn't even keep up with like, tickets. Didn't even, the, didn't even go to the casino. <laughs> just was playing video games. Oh, go to Dave hey, and Buster's. <laughs> I, I want an iPhone. I mean, I want an iPad, but I can promise you, I could have bought. Uh, Steve Jobs out of his freaking <laughs> his, yeah. his job, man. It was like shit. Like, well, we went up there and we were spending like three or three or four hundred dollars a day. And I come come back home, my dad be like, "Hey, man, um, 
why don't you go get you this? Why don't you go get you that? I was like, well, I ain't got no money. He's like, you just got paid. I was like, well, I went up there and we went to the movies. We went, hung out here and there. And that was, like I said, it was stupid. And then You should have just bought an Xbox, man. I should have done something, man. <laughs> <Sit at home. laughs> I don't even want to look at back on that time, man, because I, I literally could – I asked the I should ask the arcade guy if I could uh, use it as a tax write off. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that yeah. iPhone. You know, I know I only paid a dollar for it when I want it, but I actually put about a thousand into it. Can I write that off on taxes? Yeah. But yeah, it was it was it was a change, man. And then you know that's when um, that's when I just said, hey, eventually you're not gonna be able to live, be living for yourself. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like now being able to? Uh, take care of your family with music how cool how much of a blessing is that it's a it's something i never i never pictured i never uh thought it was possible because it's always been i've always been told that's you know that's that's a hobby until it ain't you know that's, yeah until that outweighs what you're doing which i was like damn i'm making good money out here like i don't know if i can ever be able to uh make that kind of money on music and i put so much money into it and it's like, but at the end of every year after I have babies, if I had an income tax come in and there was a, I had just enough money to go record a song, I'd go cut it. Yeah. But 12 years, 12 songs, you know, it was like, I just kept putting one out and I just kind of kept building <clears throat> like that. But I wasn't going to take uh, food out of my baby's mouth mm -hmm. to go, but I would go get me a guitar if I could get me one and. You know, I did every now and then. I did like every couple of years. I'd do something for myself to yeah. kind of improve myself on my music. But it was a slow process. If I'd have been uh, single or, or without kids, you know, I, and I'd have got on fire for music and not on fire for arcades, I would have yeah. been like, <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> but yeah. I wouldn't have had a story. I have. Yeah, I mean, you've owned your, you know, you've owned, you know, where you're at, and you know, take care of your family, and you've. You know, it's all worked out the way it's supposed oh, yeah. to. You know, that's a cool thing. Yeah, man, and it's 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 cool to me to be able to come into this town and have an outside perspective. You know, and kind of have still that same uh, storyteller um, mentality, but trying to learn how to, uh, you know, still fit in in a way. I guess you say because it's like sometimes I do feel like I'm still the outsider, but at the same time, what's wrong with being the outsider? You know, so yeah. it's like. Every now and then you need something a little different, like a dick down in Dallas. <laughs> yeah, something, yeah, something. Uh, so, do you have any like, um, uh, do you have any plans to like put out an album soon, or you I, know, you got this tour starting? I've got a, uh, I got Wolf's Cry coming out, which is going to be, it's going to be a part of, okay. of the new EP. Uh, nice. We ain't sure if it's going to be EP or album yet because we keep having songs come in, you know. But uh, it's going to be called Poets and Old Souls. Nice. And uh, Frank Foster. Yeah, uh, he jumped on that song with me. Oh, badass! And, yeah, he, he hit me up, man. We had a history too, man. It was like ten years ago. I remember him seeing me, and I, I was, I was working uh, on the rigs. And I looked up to him because, like, we both from the patch, man. Yeah. And we're having a conversation, and he said, you know, he's just giving that bullshit, you know, that roughneck talk. He's like, hey, man, you know, he's like, you ain't ready for this. I was like. I know, man. You know, at that time, you're wanting to say I am. You know, I'm, I'm wanting to say, yeah, I'm ready. But he's like, you know, you're a great songwriter, though. And so I kind of took that as a grain of salt, and I kept moving, though. I listened to everything he put out. I still, you know, thought to myself, every day I was swinging a, sw a sledgehammer or, or pulling back pipe, I was listening to Frank Foster. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, somebody made it out of here. You yeah. Know? It's what he used to work on. Yeah, clubs, right? yeah, he used to work in the, on the rigs and – uh and so that's how I did it, man. I just started putting my shit out there and writing the same. It was almost like I was writing the same song. Yeah. But just finding a different finding way a different way to say it. Yeah. Because yeah. all I was doing was missing my babies. I mean, yeah. at that point in time, I done got so consumed with just like, man, you know, all that time I thought that uh, I'd never get homesick. Yeah. Here I am homesick thinking about my babies and then trying to figure out how later on down the road I'm going to uh, tell them like, Daddy had to go to work. I can't stay at home and make make that kind of money. Yeah, and that's when I wrote Oilfield Dad, and yeah. you know that kind of took off. And everybody in Oilfield from now on was like, "Why ain't you out there in Nashville? Why ain't you on on the Voice?" I hated hearing that, man. I, got, I was <laughs> you like, "Try out for the Voice." You should go on American you, Idol. I yeah. have ten times. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get. I didn't make the cut. I didn't, I didn't either. Did my, you ever try out for it? I tried one time. My brother was going. My little brother uh, wanted to go, and I went up there, and they let me get like. 
maybe a half a second into a George Jones song, and it's like, oh, you're done. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, dude. Uh, so <laughs> my, I, when, I I went my man, when me and my manager, Alex, first started working together, we went down to Miami, and I, I walked into the studio. It was hot as fuck. I was in jeans. I sang, like, part of Red Dirt Road, and, and they were like, all right, you're good. And I was like, well, fuck me. I just yeah. flew all the way down here <laughs> yeah, for I nothing. So. Stood in yeah. line that wrapped around the whole city of Atlanta. But, dude, it's like how many people we know that were on those shows and, the, you know, their careers. Yeah. They didn't even have a career. No. A, nobody's even heard of them, you know? Well, yeah. I think that's the Even old, people that win, it's like, yeah. oh, he was on Idol. So, oh, that's cool. The but success like, stories are the people that didn't make it on there. Yeah. Those yeah. are the fun ones. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's like a flash pan thing. You like think Dalton Dover was on that show. Really? Yeah. I didn't know but that. But like, you yeah. know, he's yeah. had to make his noise on his own. Yeah. You know? I had a I had a guitar player that came and played with me one time, and he went and back in the old, uh, like, 2016, <coughs> he he went on, and then uh, I wired up Cade Fainer's daddy's house. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm over there in Shelbyville, and me and my boss wiring up his house, and he's like, uh, that kid plays – hell of a guitar man and he's looking for a band he's got his own band but he's looking to play when he ain't playing I was like, okay and so we was gonna have a a rehearsal and i never made it over there to do it but now you know his story he went on idol now he's with gabby barrett and yeah doing big shit man and he don't he don't answer on instagram <laughs> so hey kate no, no, he, he's good man he's just real good people like i'm i'll be honest with you all bullshit aside, like you talk about faith, man. Yeah. That 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 guy right there and his family are just really great people. Yeah. Have you had any people make fake accounts on you? Right oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's like, what McElwain's over there doing, literally right now. <laughs> that man's on his phone. You know what's crazy is like now, now I have to go in there and block people that are, are telling people to message them because they're my manager. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah okay, so. Faking me wasn't enough. Now you're faking. You're my manager. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's like fake. Uh, People are Trey's mom. They got fake Matt Burrells now. Huh? <laughs> fake, yeah, they got everything. No fake McElwain. They yet. sell like VIP tickets to meet no Trey. Shit. For yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. The people pay to have sex with Trey. Yeah. Golly. People pay to suck my dick in the green room that, to yeah. fake people. Yeah. Damn. That's pretty wild. crazy. Yeah. I'm just letting you know what's yeah, coming. That's you that, know you keep yeah. putting out good hey, music. This is what's happening. My, you know, you know, if my old lady ever runs me <laughs> off, I would take a paycheck for it. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, they're gonna have to pay me though, because I ain't gonna deal with her. <laughs> Hell, they give me some of my shit. I just <laughs> fucking do it right yeah. now. Yeah. Do anything for money. Yeah. Oh um, man, that's great, dude. That's all right, um, great. where's the bean boozled? It's uh, uh, I got it. I, got I it. could fuck up a jelly bean. Oh, you're about to. Here we go, Bonner. Okay. Your pomegranate or old bandage? I had that one last Dude, time. I don't even care what flavor it is. Just let me eat it. Here you go. Hold on. Wait till everybody gets theirs. <laughs> what? Can you do it at the same time? Trey is toasted marshmallow or stink bug. Low. I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> I don't even see that one, so I guess I got to go again. Your berry blue or toothpaste. I think, man. You got a good one. What is mine, Mitch? Stink bug. One. Oh, that don't sound bad. A pomegranate. Damn, that's the same one. Damn. Oh, I'll just pick one. Yeah, just stay. Uh, All right, you're getting a Juicy Pearl or Booger. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Man, it could have been worse. I know there's another one in yeah, there. Yeah, boogers, boogers don't taste too good. <laughs> I'll do a uh, birthday cake or dirty dishwater. Yum. Um, All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah, one, two, three, go. Mm, fuck me. One's toothpaste. <laughs> Stink bug as fuck. <laughs> My birthday cake. Bonner, you gonna choose? I don't, I don't have a choice, man. What'd you get? I got the booger, man. <laughs> <laughs> he make a face. He's just uh, just chewing it up. <laughs> what did you get, Mitch? I got birthday cake. Damn, is it good? Hmm? Man, fuck you, man. Does it taste like a booger? <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you get my booger? Why'd you do a It don't taste like the other thing you get said. Get the cheese. <laughs> More cheese. No, no, it tastes, said, yeah, I got the booger. A juicy pear or a booger? It's not a juicy pear. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. We've all ate our boogers before, though. That ain't, yeah, that man, that ain't too bad. <laughs> Where, who, who in here was a booger eater as a kid? Me, for sure. I wasn't into eating my boogers, were y'all? Oh, no, I did. I was into picking them. Yeah, I might I might have test licked it one time. Like. I'd fling them. No, I try. I definitely try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I definitely try. Do you ever eat like glue or crayons or anything? Some people did. No, I never did that. 
Watch you, Brian. Did you ever eat glue or ground? No, I sniffed it, though. Sniffed it? Yeah. What about Sharpies? You ever sharp gasoline? No, I never, <laughs> I never I did that. That gets you, like, real fucked up. <laughs> I never yeah. did the gasoline. I did love the smell of it, though. Or right? kerosene. I still love the smell of gasoline. Yeah. Like, I never did You that. ate your boogers? Oh, yeah, when I was little, yeah. I bet Mitt. I mean, I bet McElwain ate boogers. I mean, look at me, dude. I'd eat anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> we had this kid. I didn't miss a meal when I was We had kid. this kid in high school. Oh, not high school, but middle school. Me and my brother called him Booger Nose. Because he just always had boogers. Hey, McElwain, you got any gum or something over there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so so you're on the oil field. Are you, you're playing music while you're working, like maybe after work? Yeah, after work. Like, we're all just drinking a beer, yeah. sitting around location, and you no know, bullshit. Are people it. telling you that you suck at this point? Are they telling you you're good? Are they, or Wait, what's, what's the review review of you at this one? So, like, that's you know, Brad, one of those bad boys. Okay, well, I, I think it started out as I would, I would, I would kind of like, uh, I'd be writing something. And I've always been like kind of go off to my own corner. Yeah. You know, and so they would say, hey, man, you know, we heard you writing something. Let's, let's hear it. And I was like, ah. And that was kind of like my test in the waters. And I, uh, I'd sing them something. And he's like, man, you got to do something with that. Like, nobody writes about this shit. Like, nobody talks about what we go through out here. And it just kind of turned into that. Like, I was just anything we'd go through. I'm talking about like, you know, from one job. Uh, to the next like anything we was going through I would just write it and it was like a journal through songs that I just they liked it so I just started putting it out to the world and the rest of the oil field liked it and next thing I know that's that's really my demographic for a long time was cool. the oil field so that's cool yeah. and it did a so, lot for you too right you yeah, struggled with, with mm, like depression and stuff like yeah, that man. so it was kind of like it was it was definitely one of therapeutic those, it was therapeutic to kind of keep my head on straight uh, and not go off and do some crazy shit because it's easy to do that out there too. I mean, oil field towns are about like Nashville, you know. They're, you know, they know that you're out there in a man camp for months at a time, sometimes a year at a time, you know, and you're not at home. So you go anywhere and it's like, all they want, all they want, you know, there's women everywhere just like, hey, you know, you're, you go pull up into a coffee shop and they're in underwear. Like, yeah. that's, you know, yeah. so it's like that's dangerous. I was like, I, I, I think I'm just gonna go sit on a tailgate and yeah. keep my shit together and mm -hmm. uh, and keep my family together. And that's what I did, man. I just turned it all into songs and you know, thought about them most of the time. And did you ever think that music would get you out of the oil field? When did or when did that become reality? It was so? always the drive. I think that that's the biggest thing. It was like it was a drive, but at the same time, the reality of showing up. And doing what I was doing, whether or not I made it out of the oil field with the music, I was gonna make it out of the oil field by either you know advancing my career in the, mm -hmm. in the oil field or whatever. It, it didn't matter. Like I love my music, but I didn't have the money to go throw into music and do what I could do at work because I'm getting paid to show up and uh, try to outwork the next guy, and also like the guy behind me. You know, if I wanted to learn the next guy's job, I knew that I had to have that guy at a certain level to where, okay, I'm going to leave here and go learn what this dude's doing because he wants to learn what the next guy's going. Because mm -hmm. you can't just leave a guy that don't know what yeah. he's doing on a rig and something yeah. blow up, man. Because, I mean, that's the that's the biggest thing I faced a lot was, like, <laughs> the uh, that, that constant, uh, you know, it's always dangerous. I've seen people very badly you know i've killed and injured out there you know so it's like i didn't i always wanted to leave with the people that was around me and make sure that they left the way they came in for their family and mm. so if i ever taught somebody who was behind me or if that somebody who ever taught me that was ahead of me mm. they always said you're gonna do it the way that i was taught to do it thoroughly yeah. to the point and that's <laughs> kind of been my thing ever since with songwriting it's like i just want to learn i want to learn something new every day about how i can uh keep this craft going this this uh storytelling to so to so it's uh back in the authentic days when really and truly if you was going through something you just sit down and wrote it and it didn't matter how freaking ugly it was or how uh cliche it was you know mm -hmm. sometimes it's like i feel like i write some shit that i just want to i want to write something that's uh not about uh having dark things and yeah but I've learned to do that. It, it, in the beginning, I didn't know how to. Yeah, it was break. more of a therapeutic thing. Yeah. And now it's like, how do I yeah, continue I, this thing? And, you know, I feel good. So I fuck how do I make yeah. people feel good, too. You know? It's, especially, like, with on stage, man. You just don't want. They came to have a good time. And, like, everyone's an outlaw on all these songs that I got now upbeat. 
I'm there for those songs. I'm there for those. Yeah, you don't want to suck the energy the, yeah, out of the room. Yeah, I think we have one slow song in our set now. Yeah. You know? I think my, when I first got here, I was like, I had Beauty and a Struggle, and I had all these other sad songs, and Morning Shine came out, and I wrote about the bull riding days, and I wrote about this, that, and the other. But uh, that upbeat energy, it is really like, that's another healing that I didn't know. Yeah. So like getting out there on stage and seeing those people that came to see you and they're singing your songs back to you, it just takes you back to like thinking, damn man, like they on you know, I I know these guys that busted their ass to pay for these tickets to get here. Yeah. Every day they're doing the same thing that I've been doing all these years. And, you know, it may not be music that they're dreaming of, but they're dreaming of getting away or, yeah. or getting up in the world too. So for if sure. you're kinda of, they're all looking at you. They want they want to know how somebody looks like them that wears the same scars as them and mm-hmm. it, it's up there on that stage and and they're happy and yeah, thriving. Hell yeah. It's great, man. Um when does uh when's your EP coming out? EP we're, we're shooting for fall. And you got a single coming out before then? Do yeah, you know when that one's dropping? Twenty seventh? Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. January twenty seventh. January twenty seventh. I don't know if this episode this episode won't be out by then, will it? I didn't know it today. Yeah, it's not. Well, anyways, go fucking listen to yeah, it. That's what we're <laughs> doing. Yeah. Here. And uh, and I really appreciate you coming on the episode today, dude. I appreciate I you really too, do. man. I want to get another uh, another uh, writing session in. I know yeah, we got yeah, some we'll good ones it. up. We'll do us. it. We'll do it. Um, and then uh, where can everybody find you on everything? It's just uh, Brian Martin with a Y. I always tell everybody with a Y because. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think I got yeah. I got booked at a show because somebody thought I was Brian Martin with an I. I mean, I I, <laughs> I still enjoyed the show. Who's Brian? <laughs> Who's Brian with an I, Martin? Uh, he's he's a good dude, but as long as the check clears. Yeah, well, you know, he, I, I think it was like one song he had listened to some of my other stuff, but he had, the the one song that he that I didn't play. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. What I told about. you about that. Yeah, uh, the fedora. Uh, he had he's like he's got like a fedora and a beard and great, you know, got some great songs. And I tell everybody, I was he like, lives in like, I'm trying to look this guy up. Yeah, I said, hey, y'all check him out too, but don't forget about the why. He's always, <laughs> he's the guy that's like always yelling at the at his tick, on his TikToks, right? Oh, no, that's Brian Andrews. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I've met Brian too. I played uh, Wood Talk, I think, or something like that. Uh, I'm going to lose so many followers because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, it works, dude. I can't, you know, I. You know, my deal is, too, is, like, I, I've learned so much from social media of knowing what I can and what I can't do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's one thing I, you know, my deal is, is I'm not, an, you know, I joke with average Joes all the time about, like, put me in a movie. And it's like, you can't act. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I can't. Yeah. Like, I can't even act, you know, in these circumstances. Yeah. Like, you know, but I think that's a good thing, too. At the end of the day, like, one day I'll, I'll be able to learn how to, like, I guess what you say, you know, wear some of it a little bit differently, yeah. but still be me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But right now, I'm just happy with, you know, knowing yeah. that knowing who I am and knowing that the people know, hey, I ain't very uh, media trained or yeah. I ain't very yeah. uh, polished yet. Well, man, I just think you're real as it gets, and that's what I love about you. Well, thank you, you know bro. I mean? You are, too. Uh, you're, you know, you're very authentically yourself, and, and, I mean, to me, that's, that's the kind of people I want to – you know, be around and see succeed people that aren't putting on an act, and that's <laughs> yeah. a beautiful thing. So I, I appreciate it, stick, man. stick, stick with that shit, yes, sir. Know? And uh, we appreciate you coming on to the podcast, and uh, y'all be sure to um, subscribe, watch, you know, like this video, whatever. If you're listening, go to uh, on iTunes and leave us a review. That would help us out. And uh, if you're listening, you should definitely watch it on YouTube and see our facial ex- expressions because <laughs> it's really funny. So, um, yeah, we'll see y'all next time on episode 27. Seven. Thank but you. thank you for listening to episode 26, and uh, we'll see y'all later. Peace out. Give a holler to that blue collar boy out in the holler. Let him ride you out the city around the farm. There's some fishing in the dark. Get you digging out the stars a little closer out here. No, if you need a little change of view You wanna see how the down hole looks on you Light it up, he'll be gone Just give a country boy a call If you wanna see what you hear in them country songs Wanna watch a harvest moon